Glory to the Emperor, Guardsmen. Today we are going to speak how you need to fight Xenos, Mutants and Heretics. This knowledge will guide you and your fellow Guardsmen on Typhon Primaris, Calderis and Meridia sectors. With Emperor's will you could live to fight another day, who knows. Previously we've already talked about all kinds of Xenos, but since then Blood Ravens, Drawback Tau, Necrons and Dark Eldars. Now they are no longer a threat to the Imperium of Men. For Chusad Guardsmen vs Sisters of battle, perhaps spread the will of the Emperor elsewhere, who knows. Or they needed to refill their churches that they need to drop from the orbit. Anyways, there are six sides of the conflict that we should focus right now. Few thick chaos troops, Eldars, Greenskins, Tyranids, your fellow guardsmen and space marines. At the time of the battle for Kronos our chapter has been um, more resourceful. Here on the other hand we are tied to only a few squads at the time. This our recruiting worlds after all. Any combat division, group, band has its leader. Every faction has their own commanders, usually split into melee, ranged and support roles. On Kronos factions were different and had completely different ways to fight each other. But since then war became more perfected. Thus every race has certain units that obliged to a certain role. Machine gunners that potentially could be transitioned into anti-vehicle squads, strong melee soldiers, utility vehicle, tanks that deal in damage and so on. In this way you easily will learn the basics and tactics of the holy war. Still, there are a lot of differences between the factions. To defeat enemies of mankind you need to know enemies of mankind. Tyranids. Have you ever heard stories about unstoppable high fleets, stories about tyrants, carcass of which even space marines heavy bolter could not penetrate, that Milky Way is probably surrounded by tyranids from all the sides and they will consume us all? No? Good. Otherwise I would have called you a heretic and inquisitor might question you and I would need to find a new guardsman to teach. Anyways, they are bugs. They are either big, either they are small, but there are a lot of them. They are tough. Most of their units are melee, so keep a distance and you'll be fine. Before they will sneak up on you. They can do that. The general idea when you fight this race is to be careful and to watch your surroundings in order to locate their tunnels or hidden troops. Because in melee they are probably the best faction that out there. Tanky, high damage, Swarm Lord allows to reinforce, a few other types could give buffs to units. In other words, the longer Tyranids are uncontrollable, the harder it will become to stop them. Keep that in mind, Guardsmen. According to our librarian, filthy heretics became much weaker since the battle for Kronos. Ulkir is not that big of a threat in comparison to Bloodthirster. Their regular demons could be easily banished by our space marines. Still, hate the heretic, but never underestimate the heretic. Their infantry is more special specialized now. They could be a threat both to human or vehicle. Overall, as I've said before, Chaos is weaker than it was before. Eldars are the same tricky, filthy Xenos as they were before, although they've got a few more tricks in their sleeve. Now they feel more vehicle oriented and Red Guards one of the best infantries in this sector. They are no match for Space Marines of course, but still a force you need to reckon with. They become less mobile, uh, well, they are still, but feels weakened in comparison to Battle for Kronos. Avatar is also weaker. It gave a population boost before, now it's just suppression resist to nearby friendly troops. Greenskins almost didn't change. Same break wall with a head concept. Lots of infantry, shooters, melee, now their leaders have more tactical abilities and overall just a strong faction. Do not underestimate an orc. I should add that now they have less vehicles variety, they are now more like a utility and their top tire unit, Commando, is a former shadow of self. Your fellow guardsmen and your ornaments haven't changed, your army got a few tweaks at very most. Still a strong faction with a nice vehicle variety and weak infantry at the start. That's why you need additional training guardsmen. Just wait till you get your bane blade and the battle for the enemies is pretty much over. Our chapter as I mentioned previously became less resourceful. Even our terminator squads can be called only on a special occasion. Land Rider now is also weakened and serves as a mobile reinforce point. So dreadnoughts have become metal fist for the army. Overall it feels like Xenos forces acquired more powerful troops. In other factions, well, we have our faith. Tech priests created simulation where you could sharpen your skills, but there are not that many recruits willing to do so. This simulation is not very stable due to… how do they call it? Bugs? You mean turnits? 
Anyways, how do you fight on the battlefield, guardsman? Now we don't have a stationary base, only a rally point. It's more about running rather than shooting. Points are more important than ever before. There are acquisition and power. You could upgrade power points to get more of this resource. Like previously, you call in your troops via your headquarters. Most units could be upgraded. Better equipment, addition of commanders or even change the role that suits you the most. Not that many changes since the previous times so far. As they say, war never changes. If we take a closer look, fights do go differently. Battlefields became wider, more open, plenty of space to maneuver. If before we've got a strict line of front that we should push, now it's all about positioning and tactical superiority. Combat became even more dynamic, you need to manage and order your troops more precisely, as you can command less soldiers. Every laser gun shot counts. Vehicles are expensive and less of a problem for melter guns or any kinds of anti-armor weaponry. Use surroundings to your advantage. Keep an eye for your squads and control the points. And also constantly run around. Besides scheduled drills, tech priests also created last stand simulation, which fucking sucks, out of character narrator. This mode is one of the most boring things I ever played. This is an unnecessary transition to MOBA that Relics always dreamed of, which led us to Dawn of War 3. Commander's DLCs are not worth it, because after one tedious fight you will be bored. If you would prove useful enough guardsman, you will be honored to serve under the command of Gabriel Angelos and his brothers in his campaign to free this system from tyrannies, heretics and traitors. Out of character again, because I don't know how to comically explain this mode, which in fact you will play, because it's the best part of Dawn of War 2. As you've noticed, this game is not so different from the first one, except for the dead multiplayer and broken skirmishes, where you just running around. And in Retribution it barely works from technical side. They wanted to make MOBA, yeah. Anyways, at least the campaigns work as intended. I completed them both solo and in co-op mode and should say it makes no difference. Cooperative mode just blended in a single playthrough, so the guest would have no control whatsoever. Host can change everything, other players don't even receive the progress from the campaign. As we talk about the gaming experience, well, with two squads you have better control, but less fun, because your teammate can go elsewhere and it's not that interesting to play only with two squads instead of four. One of them, commander, that you could not change. I personally wanted that relics gave me my typical campaign like in any other RTS. A few story driven missions where I could dive in Warhammer lore in this case. Basically what they did with original Dawn of War and Winter Assault. Here we've got kinda of a mix from original and 4x from Dark Crusade and Soulstorm. This concept is uh, Fine. In first Dawn of War, most of the missions it was just a simple wipe out of the whole map, but in this case missions are way more interesting. We have some amount of these wipeouts, but mostly you would have a few objectives, boss fights, story targets, etc. It especially works in Chaos Rising campaign, where you can become a bit of a heretic with cool abilities. The most interesting stuff by far in first two campaigns is inventory management. RPG elements are not that deep here, but deep enough to get you interested. You can change your squads and even their role to some extent, with different melee, ranged weaponry, it can be additional perks, utility stuff and so on. Later you could even get terminator armor that will also change how squads performs. Old stuff could be sold for additional experience. You probably will spend a lot of time on this screen. and. This is cool. Throughout the missions you can secure objectives such as arrays, shrines, etc. That also will give you additional tactical abilities. Although I wanted more RTS than a MOBA in Dawn of War. But this compromise is fine, I guess. We have new ideas, a nice engagement with the gameplay, some roots to the old game and Warhammer 40k lore. Second campaign from the DLC Chaos Rising is the continuation of the story from the original game. They've made a few tweaks here and there, for example, now we have separate ammunition for explosive, tactical abilities and healing. You could become a heretic with new abilities, but overall it feels the same. Still could recommend to play. Retribution, on the other hand, is another story. Relics are so desperately wanted to make another 4x campaign, so they've transferred Dark Crusade right into Retribution. What I want from Dawn of War campaign, just give me a bunch of missions with different factions, a few cutscenes, just like in Warcraft. That's it. Retribution's campaign is 
fine. Here we can play all factions and even it became more RTS like. Now we gather requisition and power during the missions and can train our troops. After the missions we can select rewards like in Dark Crusade or Soul Storm. Also we can choose elite squads instead of heroes. The problem is that the missions for all factions are the same. With different voice lines and cutscenes and different storyline aka Dark Light Side. But that's it. If you completed campaign one time you basically seen all the new content. Can't rent that much because it's just a DLC, not a base game. This matter, it's fine. I called this video how to down of war, but if being honest, I just didn't have no idea what to say about this game. Most of players tried this before I did. I played it long time ago, but completed the campaigns for the first time. Something new about the game, you knew this already. Perhaps the main major thing that I can add is that down for 2 is not better or worse than the first game. It's just different. Main reason why I probably will never play it again because Retribution has a lot of bugs, at least on my machine. They are fixable, but I'm too lazy to waste my time on a game that I'm not the biggest fan of in the first place. It would be more fun for me just to install Apocalypse mod for the first game. See ya, Marines.